Seems like a tale of two Kovaches. Hey guys, this is my review for Altered Carbon Season 1. This is a show that was just released on Netflix. It in fact, if I'm correct, is the most expensive Netflix television series ever made. This was actually made out in Vancouver. I know a few people who worked on it. And the hype for this within the Vancouver film scene was huge. The amount of talk about it, this the aesthetic, the world building aspect of this show was huge. They were calling this the Game of Thrones killer or that's what Netflix is trying to do. They tried that with Marco Polo, it didn't work that well. It, in the end, it got canceled, but there's nothing that Netflix has had, aside from maybe Stranger Things, House of Cards, or The Orange is the New Black, that has come close, even at all close, to the absolute fandom that is Game of Thrones, and that's what Alter Carbon tried to do. Does it succeed? Does it fail? Let's get into it. First off, I will say the world building is fantastic. It's as though Blade Runner took place in a Game of Thrones universe with titties and blood everywhere. There is so much mature visual imagery. There's so much world building. There's so much, in fact, that there's actually too much. Because while we're seeing all these visual aspects and these cool little trinkets and odds and ends throughout the universe and how things work on Earth, we are getting so much exposition that it's flying past us faster than a Christopher Nolan movie. And there's too much of it to be gained. What the whole idea of the show is, is there's stacks. The idea that once you die, as long as you aren't shot in the neck, the back of the neck where the stack goes, like USB chip, you are able to pass your consciousness into a new sleep, aka a body. I don't know why though, I don't know what I'm referencing, but I kept on calling them skins. What it is about is Takeshi Kovach, who is a former terrorist, envoy, freedom fighter, who was brought back from 250 years of being dead to investigate the murder of a meth, which is the meaning for a, an extremely rich immortal, which is a, basically a person who has never died actual real death. They just kept on passing on their consciousness to a new body. And what we see is a massive cultural divide between the less fortunate, the extreme poor, and then the meths, who basically are gods. They're living gods because they don't die and they can answer people's prayers or their wishes if they wish to, but usually they're just rich assholes. And that's the thing that keeps on coming back. This is a theme that is constant throughout the entire movie. It's an obvious play on the 1% and blah, 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 and all that stuff. The main character of Joel Kinnaman is actually not too bad. I like Joel Kinnaman, even though some people say he can't act his way out of a wet paper bag. And I've never seen him in The Killing, but I have liked some of his work in the past. So as a main character, he is pretty good. He's got definitely the noir feeling down with the cigarettes, the drinking, the narration, just the character. He's pretty cool. I actually do like him, even though he is written quite badly at times. As for how the show starts, it pulls you in. If anything, it's just cool to watch. Sometimes you're gonna kind of roll your eyes at the dialogue or what the character's choices are, but you will constantly be entertained with just how interesting the whole universe and the story is. And I will say, right up until episode eight, you're in it. You're in it for a good long time. It's definitely a binge watching, a binge worthy show. The fourth episode is by far the best one with the idea of virtual torture. It's really creepy, really wicked. However, coming into the conclusion, episode 9 and episode 10 ruin it. They absolutely destroy the credibility of the show. I'm not going to give it away, but let's at least to say when the final villain is revealed and the motivations of this villain are constantly being slapped in your face over and over again, even though you're thinking and sitting there going, this is stupid, this is terrible writing, this is completely unfounded, it keeps on repeating itself and it turns into this really by the numbers cliche action piece and it's not that interesting. I will say there's maybe one or two moments throughout these two episodes but the show's credibility takes a fucking tank in the final two episodes and I was really let down with the resolution. However, leading up to that resolution was 
it was a really cool time. I admit it's a very binge-worthy show, as I've said. The aesthetic is really cool. The characters themselves are quite interesting, as well as the action. Actually, that's something I should say, is the action is fantastic. And I'll definitely have to say that I enjoyed all of the scenes with the original Takeshi Kovach, played by Will Lun Yi, who is actually the voice of the main character from Sleeping Dogs. Right when he speaks, you're like, hey, it's that guy. I liked all of his past elements, the idea of what an envoy is, his relationships with Falconer, and there's a lot of elements that really work, and it makes you want to know more about the world. However, there are a lot of stereotypes and a lot of cliches that keep coming up, which kind of ruin it from going into really good storytelling, but the world building will keep you there. That's something I cannot deny is the world building will keep you in this and just how cool it is to watch. It's a really cool show up until the end. However, through its several issues here and there and just kind of I feel the muddledness of the characters and just their final motivations and just the ending. The last episode is just awful. It's just bad. It kind of ruins the experience for me, but I still will recommend it. You guys have definitely got to watch this just for how exceptional this was. This is a pretty big feat for Vancouver filmmaking in terms of television. This was uh, made by Skydance Television Studios, which just opened in Vancouver a few years ago, and this is their first major project. So it's really cool to see something this big being made in Vancouver, and it's really cool, and everyone who worked on it should be proud just for having worked on this show. In terms of a storytelling perspective, though, you won't like it as much as other things. Like, I'd much rather watch Blade Runner or anything else over this. I don't know if I could watch it again, and I don't know if I'll come back for the second season. I might just watch a few episodes, but then in the end I'll probably be pulled in, but it's just... I'm not going to come back for the story. I'll come back for what they can do with uh, the aesthetic and just the visuals of the show, but I'm probably not going to come back for the story if that's my first choice. So in the end, I'm going to give the first season of Altered Carbon a 4 out of 7. I think it was cool, I just don't think it's really that well written. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you like it, leave a like down below, and if you're interested in more, maybe hit subscribe. By the way guys, I want to mention this too, I'm going to be interviewing my work friend Natalie Katrina Lazaro, sorry if I've said that wrong, Natalie. She is the star of a Winnipeg made film called Talent. And it just premiered in Winnipeg, it's part of the Canada Telefilm sort of uh, slideshow showcase thing that's going on right there. I haven't seen the movie yet and apparently you can only see it in Winnipeg right now. But once it does go, uh, well not international, around the country of Canada, I will definitely see it and review it. But I'm going to be having her on my radio show on Thursday night at 8 p.m. Pacific time on www.civl.ca. So make sure to check it out. It's going to be a real good time. We're going to talk about the movie, just her career, and just Anything else that comes up. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review, and I'll see you guys next time.